I wanted to um, share something with you guys that I'd not seen. I'd, I'd read Exodus before and about Moses being on Mount Sinai, but I didn't really notice this. And I, I was in prayer, and I read this after prayer, and I really think the Lord tried to show me some things, multiple things. I'm going to try to get both points across you know, as I talk to you. After this happened, this was this has been actually a while back. I, I made this probably months ago. But I made this image because it kind of explained... I was trying to explain it in a way, and it was kind of hard with words at the time, and it's still difficult sometimes with words. But I was trying to explain what I was, you know, what the Lord revealed to me. And, it, you know, through the Spirit, He didn't speak, you know, in audible words. I, I, I'm not trying to say that. But He um, was explaining to me the change of Moses on Mount Sinai. In his presence and out of his presence, and I, you know, if you want to look at this, you just pause the video. But I'm going to exit out of it. Okay. What I wanted to point out was how Moses changed when he was focused on God, or when he was focused on sin. I want to apply this to the people today that everybody's seen them, like the fruit inspectors, other. You know, self-righteous or works-based people. Anyone who seems like they're grumpy. I mean, we've all seen the um, you know fruit inspectors and a lot of the you know heavy works-based people and how how they act. And it it's not. I, we all probably have a story like where you know sometimes it, it gets pretty bad. And I, I don't want to speak too much or talk too much about that. But I, I think everybody's had a story, and you know, you just like where do these people come from and how can they be so angry and I think this might explain it, and I hope it helps somebody. And I, I want to s explain this also because we need to love. And if you can understand somebody, I think it's easier to love them. Now, we can't always understand things because some things are just not, you know, it's how can good comprehend evil, you know. Like sometimes it goes beyond, you know, what we can understand. Sometimes it's mind-blowing. But I think this is possible, and I hope this helps. But... What I wanted to point out was, after Moses came down from the mountain, his entire demeanor changed. And I'm going to go ahead and read just a little bit. It said, Then Moses turned and went down the mountain with two tablets of the testimony in his hand, the tablets which were written on both sides. They were written on one side and on the other. And the other. The tablets were God's work and the writings and the writing was, was God's writing engraved on the tablets. Now, when Joshua heard the sound of the people as they shouted, he, he said to Moses, There is a sound of war in the camp. But he said, It is not a sound of cry of triumph, nor is the sound of the cry of defeat, but is the sound of singing I hear. It came about as soon as Moses came near the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger burned, Moses' anger burned, and he threw the tablets from his hands and shattered them at the foot of the mountain. Okay. I... I I could read on. You can read on if you want to open up Bible Hub or your own Bible. He um, he also took the calf, you know, just destroyed it, and then he he ended up killing some people. But let's go up, just just right before that. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, "Go down at once, for your people, whom you brought up from from the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have quickly turned aside from the way which I commanded them. They have made for themselves a molten calf and have worshipped it." and have sacrificed to it, and said, This is your God who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, they are an obstinate people. Now then, let me alone, that my anger may burn against them, that I may destroy them, and I will make of you a great nation. Okay. Moses then afterward, after that said, Lord, O Lord, why does your anger burn against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians speak, saying, with evil intent, he brought them out to kill them, but in the mountains and to destroy them? I'm sorry, I, I messed that up. Okay. He said, why should the Egyptians speak, saying, with evil intent, he brought them out to kill them, and in the mountains and to destroy them? From the face of the earth. Turn from your burning anger and charge your, change your mind about doing harm to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants whom you swore by yourself and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and all this land of which I have spoken. I will give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. So the Lord changed his mind about the harm which he said he would do to his people. Sorry for my reading skills. It's hard for me to read out loud. But um, the point of it was 
right before Moses came down, he was pleading for God to have mercy on them. As he came down is when his anger burned. What changed? What made the anger burn? When he focused upon the sin. When he reached the foot of the mountain, or reached near the bottom, he saw what they were doing. His, you know, his gaze, his focus was upon the sin. I think this applies to the fruit inspectors, the um, hateful people, and I'll get to that in a, more in a minute, but it, it applies to everyone, and we need to take this seri seriously because when you're in God's presence, when your focus is upon God, you're more merciful. And I think this is kind of also... I think most of us as Christians know this, but when you are sin conscious, you are more angry. When you are, you know, God conscious, you are more merciful. When you're in the presence of God, though, you, you I mean, how can you actually be arrogant and not be, you know, wanting to be merciful? Because as Moses probably experienced, you know, he was probably, you know, felt so unworthy and so just, you know, by the presence of God that he knew he deserved death so he would have never asked for them to die because that's what happens when you're in the presence of God keeping your focus on God I think this clearly goes into the Lordship salvation and why we get so many angry Christians now is because when your focus is on God when your focus is you know solely on him and you're in the presence you don't have to focus on yourself you can feel that you're unworthy. And then when you feel that you're unworthy and you truly know this and you're not focused on the sin of other people, you're not wanting you're not calling for, you know, harm for other people. When your focus is on God and you, you feel his holiness and it doesn't even enter your mind to harm them. You you you're asking for mercy. As you get away from God, where you turn from God or you put your focus you don't even have to I mean I wouldn't call it turning always but when you put your focus on sin on sinners you start to be less compassionate and then over time I mean some people who, who have been in the presence of God for a long time it might take them longer some of them might not I, I can't answer all those questions but I know that when you are in the presence of God and anyone you know Anyone would say this. You can look through the Bible, read the Bible, and people just like fell to their face every time they were in the presence of God. I had an experience once, and I, I couldn't even lift my head. But I don't. I'll talk about that maybe at a different time. But when your focus is on God and not on sin, you are a, more compassionate. You are, you know, more forgiving. And I think this is clear. I think this is a great reason not to be sin conscious and not to dwell upon sin. I mean, I, I don't want to speak totally ill of people who, you know, are wanting sin to be judged, but make sure you be, don't be a hypocrite and judge people's sin and not judge your own. I think that also another point, it's kind of the same thing, but. God had already made up his mind or God had made up his mind right here and, and he, he asked for mercy and the Lord turned you know the Lord changed his mind the Lord knew what was going on he could see it he knew the hearts of the people also and M Moses didn't know that and, and I think that that's something we need to get across too is the Lord knows it all so he knows how to you know how to handle the situation. He knows when to be compassionate. He says, I'll have compassion on whom I will have compassion and I will, you know, I'll have mercy upon whom I will have mercy. He knows when to have compassion and when not to and he will enact justice. The um, problem is a lot of us is we keep our focus, we take the focus off of God and we put it on the sin of the world and then we just ask for you know we, we want his judgment in we want him to come we want him to come because we see how evil it is we do see the evils of the world but we when we do that then we forget about us and how much compassion and mercy we've had on our you know he's had on us I, 
there's two points is not to take your focus off of God keep it on him because we need to stay in compassion and mercy because of our own sin we, we don't want to be hypocrites and then you know want to destroy these people for something that you know we're guilty of in the past too that he forgiven us for now this is a little different during this time because they didn't have the you know the redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ and the resurrection but it still can kind of apply to today. But also we need to trust in the Lord. We need to trust his judgments. When he says, you know, I'm going to kill these people, be like, and I don't know exactly what the words Moses should have said. And I think Moses probably did the right thing by asking to spare them. But at the same time, we shouldn't, I don't know if Moses handled that differently, but I know at times I have you know, question the Lord. Like, Lord, why did you judge this person like this? But then you gave grace to this person. What's the difference? We should trust the Lord in his heart judgments because Moses, it's almost, I, I, maybe this is just me, but it's almost like Moses didn't trust the Lord's judgment. And then when he got down there, he's like, oh, Lord, you're right. Let's kill them. Because, so, he, you know, he's seen the, just how bad it really was. So I think the other point is let's trust the Lord's judgments but also, let's keep our eyes focused on the Lord. Because if you keep your eyes focused on the Lord and just trust Him and His judgments, then there is no, there, there's no way you can go wrong at all. And I think that's part of the, how the Lordship Salvation and a lot of these fruit inspectors just go off of the rails and become so just workers of Satan because they focus so much on other people's sin that it drives them mad. It drives them, and, and the more you focus on people's sin, and the more you focus on sin, the more angry you get. You know, when you focus on your own sin, it, it kind of defeats you. But they just focus on other people's sin, and this is how they transform from Lord have mercy into kill them all. And I think that we need to have that focus always on Christ so we don't fall into that. Because I'm a firm believer that it's better to err on the side of mercy than on, err on the side of judgment. It's better to just always give them the benefit of a doubt with mercy be like okay I forgive you okay okay and then just to pass judgment because I think it's better you know in my opinion it's better for you to be nice to someone that didn't deserve it than to be mean to somebody that you should have been nice to you know if somebody could be saved through compassion if somebody could be saved through mercy and love if somebody could be reached, I mean, you know, reached and helped if they needed it. If there was somebody broken and you're harsh to them, that's that's more, you know, and, and they just, they die, you know, they go off, commit suicide. Anything like that, that's more of a crime to me. That's more of a, you know, injustice than you being kind to someone who you probably should have been a little bit more stern with. I would rather be too nice to somebody I should have been stern with than too harsh to somebody I should have been compassionate on. I, I, and, you know, some people may be different, but I, I truly firmly believe that is correct. I, and I'll always believe that's correct until the Lord comes and tells me differently. But I don't know. I hope this helps, some, you know, helped you all. I, I know it it, it, I, I know I, I skipped this when I was reading Exodus before and when I'd heard the story and I, I didn't notice that and I, I think that applies today and I hope it helps you guys and that's about all uh, y'all take care, God bless